Uh, good morning, Joel Peters, um, planning operations trainee with the Rocky Mountain Type 1 team. I'm going to provide an operational briefing for today's shift. Um, we'll get started up on the north end of the fire in Division Foxtrot. Yesterday they had some drier conditions um, up at the higher elevations there and they were able to uh, do a little bit of small scale firing operations to create a little bit more depth on their indirect burnout piece through here. Most of that was focused um, just uh, east of H116. So that sounds like it went pretty well. Um, just uh, was able to fatten that up a little bit and today uh, they're going to continue the same in there and possibly do a little bit going over into golf as well to in increase the depth of this containment line um, to not have any issues with the fire moving north uh, with all that green in there. Uh, moving over into Alpha, heavy equipment operations, um, big time over here and falling as well. Right now the primary focus is the green line on the map which is our primary line um, that heads all the way up and over tying into the other fire. Um, so they still got quite a bit of work in there with the equipment and falling operations, but uh, it's going well. They're able to straighten some of these lines out and uh, you know working on getting that all the way across. We still got folks um, in here looking at some of these more direct options in, in there. It's just uh, it's slow going, um, utilizing some equipment to cut some fingers off and uh, still progressing that direction. It's just real slow going um, and what's really going to dictate that is weather and fire behavior if we're going to be able to achieve that or not. So time will kind of tell in there it's just a really big piece of ground with not uh, a ton of resources so it's going to take some time to figure that out and uh, with some luck we'll be able to bring that in smaller. Um, yesterday they discovered a couple spots uh, as the smoke cleared finally out in the in the Hemlock Camp and Hemlock Lake area. Um, they're pretty small on the map but there's one here and one here. Um, one of them was about a quarter acre, the other one's a little closer to an acre, uh, but they were able to get resources in there and get them lined. So they're not mopped up or anything yet, but they were able to get line around them yesterday um, and get them parked where they're at. So, um, and actually, excuse me, there's one up here that crossed the 27 as well. So the assumption is, you know, when this made that large scale push um, here, you know, many shifts ago that it threw some spots out there that kind of hung under the timber canopy, um, weren't that big and weren't uh, picked up by IR. And then we're able to yesterday to kind of grow a little bit and we're able to find them. So that's good, got those kind of, got those secured for now. Um, moving around further south into Bravo. Um, these maps are great. I really love the coloring because it makes it very delineated of where our primary line is here tying into the rough patch. Um, so they're working heavily on that and getting that prepped um, in case we need to utilize that um, coming into the future. This spot didn't move around too much yesterday so didn't have any problems in there um, as well. Uh, moving up into the Ash Valley um, you know, still a lot of work around those structures to make sure they're secured. We've also got crews and other resources working down on the east side of the valley as well. So if any of this fire tries to come back at the structures, so they're they're prepping in there, removing the ladder fuels, and then also doing some chipping operations in there to, to clean that fuel up so we don't take the fuel from here and move it closer to the structures and then have an issue as well. So they're working on chipping some of that and getting it cleaned up. Um, Moving into the, the yellows, the alternate line in here for an indirect piece. If this were to, you know, fire were to able to get over the 28 road, we'll have another option is there as well. So folks are kind of looking and working on some of that as far as what we can do um, if fire were to try to move south. The finger here from the Buckeye 3 fire, same deal. Just parked where it's at, have not been having any issues with it. Um, all the way wrapped back up into into Foxtrot a little ways on this side, um, into the other branch, that stuff's looking really good. They're not finding a lot of heat in these locations anymore, um, but uh, the one issue we've got out there potentially is some of this fire's been out there for a long time, so the deciduous and the conifers are starting to drop leaves and needles that were singed by the fire, um, so now it's basically a dead fuel and it's falling on the ground. So there's some potential out there for some reburn. Um, the nice thing about that is it's very thin and a small layer, so you don't have like excessive fire behavior with it, but it can happen. Um, so we've still got people that are patrolling um, some of these black lines on the map that have been there for quite a while, just to make sure something doesn't happen in there. Uh, moving south, down into branch three, um, got some chipping operations going on. 
on the west side. Um, they also got some, uh, have a repair group with some equipment fixing some of the roads in there um, that got damaged with all the, the heavy traffic on them. So they've been primarily working in here to start with and will expand from there as, uh, you know, fire activity and the like allows. The, the spot that came out over here south of DP 45 is in really good shape. Um, not really expecting any issues with that. So continuing to mop it up. Um, further all the way up to, to DP 41 uh, with its connection on the road here, just patrolling and mopping up. That's part of that old burn scar. So still a lot of heavy fuels in there and a lot of work to make sure that's good and secure. They haven't had any issues, but just still a lot of work. Um, as you can see on the, the fire perimeter, you know, if you've been watching the map over the last few days, how this is still kind of slowly coming down, um, but fairly irregular in places. So it's not a real even line. So there is some potential over the next shift or two to potentially do some um, some aviation firing in here to dro drop the what they call the ping pong balls or PSD plastic plastic sphere dispenser um, to be able to close some of that stuff in so we don't have to put people in there that way you don't have to walk somebody in through that burns car try and ignite that to get that um, threat cleaned up so that's a potential here over the next few shifts um, it's not a big area um, to square the, all that stuff up but that's a possibility over the next few days um, to really help secure that because we definitely don't want that fire moving to the north it sounds like they got uh, if not all close to all of the snagging done in there with the falling modules to to get those snags out of there so we don't have any impact on the highway through there um, but otherwise the rest of branch three is looking good um, we did lose our air attack yesterday so our aviation uh, complement is a little bit different we've got some potential help from the rough patch if we need it from a helco which would be a helicopter coordinator um, that can kind of perform some of the requirements of an air attack um, but uh, not necessarily all. So we have that option um, trying to get a replacement for us but haven't been able to. So still got a couple type 1 helicopters and a couple type 3 helicopters also. Um, didn't do a lot of bucket work yesterday. It just it really wasn't needed. They found these spots soon enough and were able to get on them with equipment and, and uh, hand crews and just didn't really need it. They were able to secure it as it was and didn't need to do that. So that's kind of the plan for today and thank you.